What is going on everyone? <laughs> my name is Under the Radar, and I'm sorry that you hear me moving my mic. I'm just that professional. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is the P4G. This is a draft league that I'm in that I ended up going 10-2 uh, and two in the regular season. Uh, the last three or four games actually did not get uploaded because I went like... Eight and eight and one or something like that. I didn't lose hardly at all, so I was guaranteed playoffs from really early on in the season. So the last games didn't really matter. So there was no need to do a team builder or upload them, in my opinion, because all it would have done was it would have given you guys something to watch, which would have been really cool. But I was really pressed for time, and they didn't matter in the grand scheme of anything. All it would have mattered was my placement in playoffs, and I didn't really care about that because, in my opinion, if you're going to win a league, you better be confident enough to beat everyone in it. Like that's just the way I feel, especially in playoffs. If you're going to win playoffs get prepared to beat everyone in there anyway so it, it, it just didn't really matter to me and i did not have the time to upload them so that's why that has not been coming up recently um so this is the semifinals of playoffs of the p4g well if you're like well what happened to the quarterfinals my opponent forfeited <laughs> so match i believe let's actually take a look at the roster real quick and i'll tell you which ones i did not upload um i uploaded the Sea Kings, I believe. So I did not upload my last two games against the Montreal x Blouds and the Tampa Bay Lux Rays. I won one, lost one. I lost to the Montreal x Blouds because he played very well and I wasn't really paying that much attention to it because as I said before, this doesn't really, it didn't impact me at all. So that didn't really matter. The Tampa Bay Lux Rays, I played them. Um, I, I'm probably going to upload that anyway just because I really enjoy Ryan and I like him as a person. So I'm going to upload that just out of due respect for him. But I won that game. So I ended up becoming 9-2 and two with a plus 26 differential in the season. And then in the first round of playoffs, someone actually forfeited to me. So I, did, I didn't realize that that would actually change over. Anyway, so that's how that went. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the way it's been going. However, I play the one person the entire season that I do not think we had a very good game. Uh, because I pretty much got a lot of hacks in my favor. He got some in his favor too, though, so I, I can't really feel too too bad about it. But we had an extremely haxy game. Like it wasn't. I don't know how to word this. It wasn't one-sided. So I'm playing him in playoffs, and that makes me feel pretty good because I'm like, at least now we can have a game without hacks and a, a fun game to where a lot's on the line. And that person, ladies and gentlemen is the Paris Polytoads coached by Psycho Moore, and his roster should be popping up on the screen like right about now. Um, I could pull it up and go back and forth in between the document, but I'm lazy. Pick and choose your battles, my friends. So he has the new Manaphy Mamoswine M core that I remember, Mega Garch, Hump, Klefki, uh, Barizion, Darmanitan. And then he has Vullaby, Wobbuffet, Lantern, and like one other mod that I can't remember off the top of my head. But I pretty much knew what he was going to be bringing from the start. Like I can, I can tell you right now, Vullaby is not going to come. I, uh, I just don't expect it to come whatsoever. Um, he also made a lot of transfers from the last time we played. If you do not remember, last time we played, I brought a Choice Bandit Hitmontop with Facade, and it kind of put a lot of work against his team because his only switch into Hitmontop was Mew, and it just got bopped by a Facade. So. That was pretty much my strategy in that game, and I kind of sort of wanted to build completely differently this game. So, uh, whenever I was looking at this team, I was like, okay, first of all, Manaphy, Mamoswine, Darmanitan, they're massive offensive threats, so I had to keep that in mind. And I looked at them, and I was like, okay, so I need to bring Suicune. Like, it's just obvious, and I know for a fact that I need to bring some type of phasing move with it so i was like roar coon just works really well with scald rest and toxic toxic is there because i can toxic the mew where it done very well if another one of my strategies doesn't really work out as as well as i would hope they can I can toxic the verizion make it go down very quickly to life orb i know for a fact he's either gonna be bringing verizion or lantern to try to deal with hold on it's gonna bother me what his other mons are so just give me one quick second to pull it up on the screen and then Oh, his last mon was Snorlax. You guys can see it right there. I have it highlighted. Um, at least I, I hope you can. Let's go ahead and take a look. Can, can you see? Yeah, you guys can see it. Okay, so 
So I was like, I need phasing move. I can phase the Snorlax. I can phase a bunch of other things. And if I can hazard stack on him, he's going to be pretty much crippled. And he is very weak to Mega Houndoom plus Scarf Togekiss, Lando I. He's weak to a lot of things with coverage. So this thing just works out really well. It gives me a really good switch in. Now. He also has some pretty awesome ground types in Mega Garchomp and Mamoswine. Now, last game, I believe he brought Choice Scarfed Mamoswine. He might have brought Bandit. I know it was Choice. At least I think it was Choice. And I wanted to have a Mon that I could bring. If he's Choice into Earthquake, it threatens it out and something takes damage and is forced to take more hazard options. Also, I wanted War on this thing because I didn't want to be trapped by Wobbuffet. Believe it or not, I definitely think that Wobbuffet is coming to this game for the sole reason that he knew that Hitmontop did so much damage to him, and if he thinks that I'm going to be bringing it again, he can trap it in there and counter me, and there goes a really good wall breaker for his team. So I would have to be Shed Shell in order for that to not work. Volibee also can wall it pretty decently because uh, Choice Man in Close Combat does about 50%, but Brave Bird after the defense drops, Oko's me after rocks, so it's like I can't really risk that. So I think Wobbuffet's definitely coming. So I want to make sure everything on my team is not absolutely trapped by Wobbuffet. I have a way of dealing with it. I have a way of punishing it. I have a way of doing something to Wobbuffet that can make it a little bit better. Uh, can make it less useful against me. Let's put it that way. So the one thing that I knew I needed to bring for those ground types is my Jirachi. I'm bringing a very specific Jirachi set. Um, it's an air balloon set with 220 in speed. That's enough to outspeed max speed Darm. 20 in HP, 4 in both defenses. Uh, Psy Shock, Flash Cannon, Icy Wind, and U-Turn. U-Turn is there just so I do not get completely trapped by Wobbuffet. Psy Shock is there because I want to hit Verizion on the correct side, and if he is Calm Mind, uh, 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 what's it called? Calm Mind, Manaphy. Calm Mind, Manaphy, I do not want to be completely set up to where I do nothing to it. So, and I also need a Flash Cannon just so I can hit the likes of Klefki and Mamoswine extremely hard. But if he's choice locked uh, Mamoswine, he has to pick what he's going to do because he either clicks Earthquake and kills something like my Mega Houndoom and kills something like, uh, I don't even know what else I have on my team, or like my Raichu or something like that. Or he clicks Icicle Crash, this thing takes nothing from it, Suicune takes nothing from it and lives a skull. Like it, late game, choice Scarfed Mamoswine, this is my answer to it, completely. Also, if he's like SD Garchomp, this forces him to click Dragon Claw the first time, pop the balloon, I hit Icy Wind, does about 60%, and I kill him with the second one. So that's also another really good thing. This checks both of them pretty well. The next model team is actually going to be my Choice Scarf Togekiss, uh, Air Slash, Dazzling Lane, Baton Pass, and Trick. This is another way to stop his defensive setup sweepers like Calm Mind, Manaphy, uh, Curse Lax, uh, Klefki in general, Mew, uh, things like that. Even, uh, even the... Um, the Wobbuffet. If I can choice lock that thing, it'll be crippled. If I can take away Volibee's Vile, I give it a choice scarf. It could hurt a little bit, but it'll it, it would still be much less bulky, and then it's not letting any hits at all. Um, so realistically, this is my best option as a choice scarf user. But Tom Bass is there again, just so I do not get trapped by Wobbuffet. And Max Speed is potentially speed tie with Mammoth Swine if he wants to run Max Speed Mammoth Swine. But I ran Choice Scarf Togekiss against him last time. It did a lot of work, and I think it can do just as much work this time. Uh, but it. It's there mainly as a pivot. I can threaten out Verizion. Verizion's a massive threat to my team, believe it or not, because like looking at its its coverage, it can have Leaf Blade, it can have Close Combat, which still hurts Jirachi, it can have like Stone Edge or something for that, it can have Close Combat for Houndooms and Headbutt, and then Leaf Blade, it can do a lot of damage to my team. Even if it wanted to run like special Calm Mind within Power Ice, if it sets up, it's very threatening for my team. So I wanted to have something that can guarantee outspeed unless it's Scarfed and Oko at night with an Air Slash. So. Togekiss is going to be that thing. It's also, if you have a Choice Scarf Flinching Mon, anything is possible in the game. The next one on the team is going to be my main Punisher of Mew and Wobbuffet. If either one of them come, I think this thing can deal with it. Uh, if he brings Mew, he is pretty much forced to bring Defog unless he wants to bring um, Volibee. So that's a thing. But if he wants to bring Mew, he cannot stay in on this thing unless he's Cobraberry. If he stays in on me on Cobraberry, I'll know what it is and I can pop it, do whatever I have to do. Um... However, if he wants to be Culverberry Wobbuffet, I know for a fact he's going to be Culverberry. Uh, I I know for a fact Wobbuffet's coming, and I know for a fact it's going to be Culverberry Mirror Coat. Can live any Dark Pulse, can Mirror Coat me, destroy my Mega Houndoom, and completely blow me back. One way around that is by forcing it to Encore me, and forcing him to go into a Scarfer and reveal his Scarfer to me. Um, so I sub up on the first Mirror Coat. Um, I nasty plot as he clicks Encore. Switches out, and I'm still behind the sub, and I nasty plot up again to plus four. He pops the sub, and I nasty plot up again to plus six. And I think at that point in time, 
I will be able to, I think the Encore will end and I'll be able to kill him unless he's Scarfed. And the only, the only two Scarfers he can kill me with are Darmanitan and Mamoswine and Virizion. As you can see from just my first couple Mons and my last couple Mons, I have decent answers to every single one of them. So that's why I'm kind of like, if I can figure out which one is Scarfed, it'd be nice. Um, I can also punish Manaphy if he's like Tail Glow afterwards. I could, and if he wants to like try to predict a switch, I can Nest Plot up on it, I can sub up on it, and I can get off two Dark Pulses. Like, there's a couple things that this thing can do this game. But mainly, be a massive offensive threat to his team and hopefully <laughs> sweep him. The next model team is going to be my Rose Raid. This is the exact same Rose Raid set, Rose Raid set that I brought last game, except with spikes over Stun Spore. Um, Yachi Berry, max HP, enough speed for max speed Mamoswine, and then 28 into special attack. Leaf Storm is there just so I can nuke um, uh, Manaphy as long as it's not at plus 3. I can live a plus 3 Ice Beam uh, as long as I'm above 75%. I can live it guaranteed. I have Sludge Bomb there just so I can hit the Virizion if he like misses a Zen Headbutt or something like he did last game. And this is where the entire plan of my team starts. This is where I actually started the team. Like, I knew for a fact that this is what I was going to build around, and I was going to go with it. When I saw that he only had Mew and Volibee as defoggers, and he had something that I could hazard stack on, such as the Wobbuffet, this is how this came to play. So, there's a lot that this thing can threaten out. Um, Manaphy, for one, if he's like Choice Specs or whatever. Um, or he's not Rindo Berry. Set up a Toxic Spikes on it. Set up a layer of Spikes. Set up anything on this thing, and I can pretty much cripple his entire team. Put it all on a timer. His only things that are immune to Toxic Spikes, I believe, are Volibee and Klefki, right, if I'm remembering properly. Yep, Klefki and Volibee, I think, are the only two that are immune to Toxic Spikes. So pretty much everything else, the second that they come in, it's going to be like, okay, so now that they're on a timer, I have a certain amount of time that I can kill. With spikes, toxic spikes, and stealth rocks from this uh, Mesprit set right here, I can do a lot of damage. Um, Yachi Berry mainly just so I can live the Ice Beam and kill it with a do a lot of damage with Leaf Storm. Even if he is um, Rindo Berry, it does about 40% or so, putting him directly in range of things like two Air Slashes, two Dazzling Gleams, uh, a Dark Pulse. Well, I think it's a Dark Pulse after Poison Damage after the Rindo Berry Leaf Storm. But it does a lot of damage to him, so instantly put things in range and also if he's like life orb mamoswine he has to click ice shard against me with the yachi berry he can't kill me leaf storm oak goes him. so there's a lot of things that could happen with this rose raid set and i'm okay with that i like it a lot the last one is going to be another exact same set that i brought last time against him and that's going to be a cobra berry physically defensive knockoff u-turn toxic stealth rocks uh mesprit this is going to be primarily my mamoswine check instead of my darmanitan check this thing is probably what i'm going to use to check darmanitan and uh snorlax this is probably what I'm going to be to check to uh, use to check Mammoth Swine. I can knock off its item, I can U turn, I can Toxic, and I can set up Stealth Rocks on it, and that's the big thing. Once Stealth Rocks are up, I think it might actually be really difficult for him to come back from anything. I just have to wait for it. I have to be able to survive long enough to kill everything late game. So, if I can. And Toxic is there as. I have Toxic on both of my walls. Just in case the plan with Rosary to set up Toxic Spikes does not come true. That is the only reason why. So I'm kind of sort of playing that by ear, hoping that I can get it to work and I can become lucky and bad and have Toxic Spikes plus Stealth Rocks plus a layer of Spikes up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a team that I'm hoping that will bring me to the finals of the P4G. I really like this team. I really like playing Psychoporn. He's a fantastic battler. He, I think he actually had a higher differential than I did in this season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he went 10 and 2 plus 35. I went 10 and 2 plus 26, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, 9 and 2, 10 and 2? Yeah, I went 10 and 2. 10 and 2 plus 26. Yeah. That's what happened. I went 10 and 2. Let me actually fix this right now so I don't like get yelled at or something. No, fuck off. No, no son of a bitch. There we go, 10 and 2. I went 10 and 2 plus 26, even plus 35. So while I made sure I won as many games as possible, he made sure he won them and destroyed everyone. Like, look, he had two games that were below. He had one game that was below a 3-0 victory. Every single one that he won was at least a 4-0 or a 5-0. Like, that's impressive. So I'm very scared for this game. He's a fantastic battler, and I'm, I'm honestly just honored to be in this league at all because it's an awesome league but 
with all of that being said guys i think i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here thank you guys again so, actually let me go ahead and put it back on the team builder thing so you guys can see why i'm bringing go showdown thank you <laughs> showdown lags so badly for me now it's not even funny but i'm gonna put it on the mvp of the season so far which is mega houndoom but I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like down below. Also, make sure you go over to Seiko Moore's channel and give him a subscribe for me. Tell him that I sent you. Make sure you show him some love from USA to France. It's, it, he's an awesome dude. But if I lose, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be disappointed in myself. But if I lose, I also know that I'm losing to probably, aside from John, the other, it's probably me, John, Psycho Moore, and uh, Emil Boy. We are probably the four best in the P4G. In my honest opinion, I think that we're the four best. So if I'm losing to another one of the best people in the league, and I can't be disappointed in it whatsoever. So it's been a really long video. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.